Mr. Doss? Miss Bennett. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the moment Cupid's arrow hit two former foes and turned them into flames. Since plot points will be discussed, this is your spoiler warning. You traded your ship for me? Hi. Number 10, Rebecca Bunch and Nathaniel Plimpton III, Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Rebecca first meets her new boss in season two, and it certainly isn't love at first sight. It's like you gotta look like a water cooler to work on him. <laughs> My dad and I have a whole bit we do about that. Yeah, he's not a water cooler, he's wonderful, and you are everything I moved across country to get away from. However, with the Santa Ana winds or devil winds sweeping through, change is in the air. A few goosebumps lead to steamy dreams culminating in a daring elevator tryst. Oh, and did we mention Rebecca's engaged to Josh at this point? Yet it would take time, an evil scheme, and a charged tango before their relationship truly ignited. Each time we fight, I crave you more. This would be better on the floor. This is our horizontal tango. In fact, both go away and do some self-work before they officially become a couple, even if it doesn't last very long. Still, if it hadn't been for the Santa Anas, who knows if anything would have happened between them at all. And then there, there was that rando kiss between us, but that happened and it's never gonna happen again. Whatever you say. I do say, cause I just, I said it. Yeah. Number nine, Nathan Scott and Haley James, One Tree Hill. Nathan, who has a combative relationship with his half-brother Lucas, initially decides to approach Haley, Lucas's bestie, just to get under his skin. There is nobody else, all right? I'd be fine with it if there was. If there were. <laughs> See, you're helping me already. Look, I can't help you, and on top of that, I won't help you. Okay. She agrees to help him with some classwork on the condition that he stops bugging his half-bro. So, it's a rocky start to say the least. I have two conditions. One, Lucas does not find out, okay, ever. All right, fine. And number two, you leave him alone. Anyway, as they spend more time together, they discover there's more to each other than first meets the eye, and sparks start to fly. Despite coming from very different walks of life, the two end up bringing out the best in each other. Before they even finish high school, they decide to stick together through thick and thin, facing life's challenges hand in hand. I dreamt we actually got married yesterday. It's weird. I had the same dream. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number eight, Mindy Lahiri and Danny Castellano, The Mindy Project. Mindy and Danny didn't exactly hit it off when they met on the first day of their medical school residency. Mindy's happy-go-lucky demeanor just didn't click with his more cynical outlook on life. This is working. This is progress. This is finally turning it. What are you doing? Now we're talking. I am sharing my feelings with you. I want to share the show with you. It's a great show. Things only got more complicated when they found themselves working at the same practice. However, a medical conference in New Mexico brought unexpected turbulence, shaking up more than just the plane. No, let her do it. She needs to okay. learn. Okay, look, you don't know the whole situation, okay? okay. I, 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 you all right? Yeah. You okay? Help me, help me. All right, hold on, get up. After that, we knew that it was just a matter of time until this will they, won't they would blossom into something more. Sure enough, the following season, it does. Maybe it's something about the altitude, but it takes another plane ride for these two to get their relationship off the ground. Hey. Hey, Danny, all these waters look the same. I, I just don't... I... Number seven, Anthony Bridgerton and Kate Sharma. Bridgerton. In season two, Edwina Sharma catches Anthony's eye practically before anyone can say Lady Whistledown. There's just one problem. His chemistry with her big sister Kate is hotter than a freshly brewed cup of tea. Still, things sour when Kate overhears Anthony discussing his future bride and instantly slips into the protective older sister role. I take issue with any man who views women merely as chattels and breeding stock. None of that was meant for you. Viscount Bridgerton, yes. When you manage to find this paragon of virtue, whatever makes you think she will accept your suit? Nevertheless, you could cut the tension between them with a knife. Nowhere is this more evident than when Kate soothes Anthony's panic over a bee stinging her. After that, even they can't deny their feelings. The other morning. When I was stung. After which you put my hand 
to your bosom. To show you I was unharmed, you were overcome. Indeed I was not. You were the one who then looked at me. You looked at me? Not in the way that you did. And how exactly did I look? However, it would take many more long looks, gentle touches, and a cancelled wedding for them to finally get together. Number 6. Blair Waldorf and Dan Humphrey Gossip Girl Initially, Blair and Dan belong to different social circles. She's the queen bee of the Upper East Side elite, while Dan is an outsider from Brooklyn. Indeed, their conflicting social statuses and personal ambitions often seem to be the root of their rivalry. You don't know the difference between Rodarte and Roadkill, you'll be guillotined. We're interns. I may not know couture, but I know how to collate. And I know how to staple so stay out of my way, or I'll use one to attach your tongue to your shoulder blade. However, as the series progresses, they find common ground in their shared interests and experiences. The pair shares their first kiss in season four and soon enough start dating. But for crying out loud, Humphrey. XOXO. It may have been the ship most Gossip Girl fans never saw coming, but we eagerly jumped on board. Dare had an enviable connection and admiration that Blair's relationship with Chuck could never rival. It's just a shame it was so short-lived. You had someone who loved you unconditionally, treated you right, and wanted to be with you every day, and then you threw that all away to let Chuck Bass decide when he's ready for you? You think you two have an epic love, but all you have are excuses. Number 5. Jon Snow and Egret, Game of Thrones One is a member of the Night's Watch, sworn to defend the realm, while the other is a wildling raider. Talk about being on opposite sides. But when Jon decides to spare Egret's life, their paths become entangled in a turbulent relationship filled with conflict, clashing loyalties, and dangerous promises. I think they'll find you. Yes. You're brave. Stupid. But brave. Despite their differences, they gradually learn to rely on each other, and their attraction grows stronger with each passing day. Their intimate moment in the cave signals a change in John's loyalties and marks a turning point in his bond with Egret. You seem to like it. I liked it, son. Who taught you that? There's been no one else. Only you. However, as any fan knows, happiness is often fleeting in the Game of Thrones universe, and trouble is never far away. Do you remember that, Kay? I should have stayed in that Kay. Number 4. Niklaus Klaus Michelson and Caroline Forbes, The Vampire Diaries. In season 3, Klaus's order for Tyler to bite Caroline adds tension to their already strained relationship, fueled by his vendetta against Stefan. However, Klaus ends up saving Caroline's life, and it totally changes the game. He's the one who encourages her to embrace the joy in life, thus taking the first step to deepen their connection. There's a whole world out there waiting for you. Great cities and art and music. Their story takes a fairy tale turn when Klaus whisks Caroline away to a fancy ball where he confesses his true feelings. I fancy you. That's so hard to believe. Yes. Why? You're beautiful. You're, you're strong. You're full of light. I enjoy you. Although she's hesitant at first, their love grows over time. Despite fate's attempts to pull them apart, Klaus and Caroline's bond endures, and for much of the time, they seem to find their way back to each other. I intend to be your last, however long it takes. Number 3. Buffy Summers and Spike – Buffy the Vampire Slayer Spike enters the scene as a formidable foe to Buffy, aiming to eliminate vampire slayers like her. Yeah, I did a couple slayers in my time. I don't like to brag. Who am I kidding? I love to brag. However, everything changes when he's captured and implanted with a chip that prevents him from hurting humans. Forced to reassess his priorities, Spike joins forces with Buffy and her friends. As their adventures unfold, his feelings for Buffy gradually surface, sparked by a revealing dream. Despite their tumultuous history, he proves to be a reliable ally, standing by Buffy's side when she needs him most. I've seen your kindness and your strength. I've seen the best and the worst of you, and I understand with 
perfect clarity exactly what you are. In season 6, while trying to find her purpose, Buffy finally decides to give this relationship a shot. However, she doesn't truly come to terms with her feelings for him until it's too late. I love you. No, you don't. Thanks for saying it. Number 2. Emma Swan and Killian Jones, Captain Hook. Once upon a time. This love story doesn't begin like most fairy tales. I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. I'm pretty good at knowing when someone is lying to me. After all, he's a rogue pirate who pledges allegiance to the highest bidder, and she's the savior. So it's fair to say that although he's a flirt from the moment they meet, it takes some time for him to gain her trust. Say anything to save yourself. Why are we supposed to believe you now? I arranged for transport with Cora. But seeing how resourceful you are, I'll offer you the same deal. I'll help you if you promise to take me along. We first see a glimmer of potential romance after Hook saves David's life in Neverland. However, Captain Swan arguably first sets sail after Emma learns that Hook had given up his ship for the magic bean that would bring her home following her adventures in the Enchanted Forest. You traded your ship for me? Hi. not have started as a fairy tale, but it sure turned into one. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Ian Gallagher and Mickey Milkovich, Shameless. They might come from two antagonistic families, but they still find their way to each other. <laughs> Joey Potter and Pacey Witter, Dawson's Creek. These two could win awards for their bickering, until one day... Did you ever get tired of talking? No. No, well, I, I don't get, get tired. tired. Well, I don't... No, I, I don't want to talk anymore. What are you trying to say, Pacey? Why are we standing? There's I don't... Comfort. Niles and Cece Babcock, the nanny. They went from trading sharp-tongued blows to, well, you know. Bellboy. <laughs> Brunette. <laughs> Veronica Mars and Logan Eccles. Veronica Mars. Who could have seen this one coming? Or how it ended? We still can't talk about it. All all. Leslie Nope and Ben Wyatt. Parks and Recreation. While they're initially on opposite sides of the agenda, they come to love each other and like each other. I'm sorry, and I know we can get into trouble, but I, 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 I can't take this anymore. I feel like we have to at least talk about it. I mean, it's not just me, right? No, it's not just you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, Sam Malone and Diane Chambers. Cheers. Sam Malone and Diane Chambers aren't just any sitcom couple. They're iconic trailblazers of the modern will-they-won't-they -they trope. At first, they couldn't be more different, always butting heads. Would you uh, like to join me? It's quiet, empty, dimly lit. Oh, much like your mind. However, as we came to know them better, we could feel that electric undertone whenever they crossed paths. Then, in the season one finale, Diane meets and hits it off with Sam's brother Derek, making things even more intense between them. This is all right with you. If you're happy? I'm ecstatic. Goodbye. See you at the wedding. Do I get to kiss the bride? I think you know what you can kiss. Sam sacks her, and just as she's about to head off, she comes back to his office accidentally hitting him in the face. This leads the pair to argue and trade shade, but just as their underlying feelings are about to explode, they kiss. Maybe this is my lucky day, huh? You disgust me. I hate you. Are you as turned on as I am? More. <laughs> what was the exact moment in your favorite TV show where you knew those two arch nemeses were destined to be together? Share it with us in the comments. Swine. Chicken. <laughs> Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.